Hey guys, uh, I'm going to be reading chapter 37 today, probably 37 and 38. Uh, 38's not that long of a chapter, so uh, we'll probably stick them both here together. And when we left off, Moon's been hanging out with Hal and Hal's daddy. Uh, Moon has been questioning all the stuff that he learned from Pap and whether it was true or not and kind of wondering why, why did he have to live out in the forest. Um, and he's starting to learn that life's a little more complicated than that. Things aren't that easy. And... Um, he visited Mr. Abrascato's store. Mr. Abrascato gave him some uh, valuable information about his pap being in Vietnam, but didn't really know much about him. And um, so all the while, Moon has been really concerned about Kit, who was in the hospital. If you remember, Kit was really sick, and Moon basically dragged him, like literally dragged him out of the forest on a big, like on a bunch of blankets and stuff with the, the uh, log behind his back tied to the blankets and like drug him all the way out. Uh, and so he's hoping that Kit's doing all right, and he's called a couple times, and the nurses have answered, and they've asked to, like, leave a message, and, you know, he's resting, and they, they would get back to him. Uh, and then they started questioning, like, they said something along the lines of Sanders wants the, to report um, all the calls that come in because, of course, Sanders is probably still looking for Moon. And so they make these calls at the laundromat that Hal takes Kit to, and uh, eventually Moon is able to convince Hal... Uh, by to take him to the hospital to check in on Kit. Chapter 37. Hal's daddy was down in the clay pit loading a dump truck when we got back to the trailer. Hal gave me new blue jeans and a plaid shirt instead of the Mo Bandy t-shirt I'd been wearing. Hospital's fancy, he said. They'll throw you out in a second if you ain't all fixed up. Neither of us said much as we drove to Tuscaloosa. I was excited about finally seeing Kit again, but I could tell Hal was worried about getting caught. He dropped me off at the entrance to the hospital and pointed to the parking lot where we where you would wait. I don't stay there too long. People start asking you questions, you get the hell out of there. I nodded. I ain't staying around if the cops start pouring in here, Hal added. I don't want you to. Good, because I ain't. I saw a woman at the front desk talking on the phone. As I got close to her, I recognized her voice, and I knew she was the person who asked for my name and number earlier. I avoided the woman and followed some people down a hallway until I saw a man with a mop and a bucket. Hey, you know where I can find Kit Slip? I asked him. The man looked at me blankly. Oh, that boy they found in the forest? I watched his eyes grow wide. Oh, oh, him? He's up on the fourth floor, room 432. How do I get up there? The man pointed to the elevator and I thanked him. I crowded into the box with some people and stood there for what must have been 15 minutes as it went up and down and the doors opened and closed. Finally, a woman asked me where I was going and I told her room 432 when the elevator stopped again. She told me to get out and walk past the nurse's station to the hall on my left. I love this part. Uh, this is just Watt Key's attention to detail. If Moon has been living in the forest his entire life, he's never been on an elevator, may not even know what it is. He just calls it a box that he goes in with a bunch of people and the elevator goes up. And then the elevator comes back down. Meanwhile, Moon's still in there. It comes up, stops at a floor. People get in and out. Moon's just hanging out. It's going up and down because Moon's got no idea about elevators. He's never, uh, he's never been in one before in his entire life. So it's like a new experience. And I find that part amusing. Watke didn't have to write that, but it just goes to uh, develop that character even more and give you some more background on uh, the things that Moon deals with on a day-to-day -day basis, things he just doesn't know about. All right, back to the story. When I stood outside, sorry, uh, the nurses all watched me as I passed them. One of them asked me if I needed help, and I shook my head and kept walking down the hall. When I stood outside room 432, I heard a television. I only had to knock once before I heard Kit's voice tell me to come in. He was sitting up in bed, and his eyes grew wide with surprise when he saw me. Moon! Moon, how'd you get here? It felt so good to see my friend that my scalp tingled and my hands shook. Hal dropped me off. I've been living with him. Kit looked confused. I walked over to his bed and stared at, started, stared at a clear tube that went into his arm. How'd you find Hal? He asked. Well, he came looking for me. I was sleeping up in a tree by the road waiting for you to come back. Yeah, I couldn't. What's that hooked up to you? It's medicine. Are you hurt? No. Feeling a lot better today. You about ready for me to bust you out of here? Kit didn't say anything for a few seconds. I... I don't know if I can leave yet. You said you felt better. I do, but but Moon, I, I can't walk. I'm too weak. <sighs> the 
The emptiness seemed to rush back into me. I want to leave, he said. I, I hate it here. I climbed up on Kit's bed. I lay next to him and I stared at the television. What are you going to do, Moon? I shrugged. I fought back the knot rising in my throat. What are you so quiet about, he asked me. I felt that if I tried to say anything that I'd cry. I thought you were going to Alaska, Moon. I'm not going. Didn't you hear anything I said when you were sick? Kit shook his head. I don't remember anything after you covered me up with those blankets. I got lonely out there. I wanted you to come back. I said I wasn't going anywhere without you. Kit didn't say anything. I thought we'd be like brothers. We'd live out there together. I felt the tears start rolling down my face. You're my best friend, Kit. I never had a best friend except for Pap. Kit rolled over and stared at the side of my face. You're my best friend too. I don't want you to be sad. Well, I don't want to be out there by myself anymore. It's not right out there. Well, where are you going to go? I shrugged. Pinson makes me feel bad. Being out in the forest by myself makes me feel bad. Hal says he's going to Helenweiler for a while. I don't have anywhere. I never had so much fun in my whole life as when I was in the forest with you. I wiped my tears. You really liked it? You liked it out there? Man, I'd give anything to go back. I wish I knew how to make that kind of medicine you need. <sighs> Me too, he said. You can make just about anything else. I nodded and I wiped my eyes again. Man, I haven't cried about three times in my whole life. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, hey, you better not stay long, Kit said. How come? Sanders has been coming around here. I sat up and looked at Kit. He do anything to you? No, he's plenty mad, though. He wanted to know how to get to where we lived. I said I didn't remember, but he didn't believe me. <laughs> He'd probably kill me if he could. He says we shot at him and ate his dogs. I told the TV people we didn't do any of it, but they don't believe me. They keep asking me if you told me to lie about it all. Well, I'm not scared of him. Sanders is making stuff up just to get me in trouble. I know. I lay back down, and we didn't say anything for a while. Well, Hal's out there waiting for me. I finally said, Moon... I wish you didn't have to go. I'm just going back to house trailer. I haven't made any plans yet. They're gonna send me back to Pinson, you know, when I get out of here. I didn't reply, I climbed out of bed. Maybe you could see me there sometime, Kit said to my back. I walked to the door and turned around. Man, I don't feel so good about all this, Kit. I'm feeling lonely. If it weren't for Hal, I think I'd be as crazy as Sanders right now. I want to be out there with you as soon as they let me as I want to be out there with you as soon as they let me. Hal says the law leaves you alone once you turn 18. That means we got less than eight years until I can come live with you. I smiled. That's right. I'll have a place already fixed up somewhere. Trailer pulled off in the forest with leaves over it. No roads. Kit nodded eagerly. I walked back to the bed and leaned over him. We'll still kill our own food. We'll grow a garden. We'll trade our vegetables for your medicine. And you know all the things that grow wild in the spring? Yeah, that's right. And make some more deerskin hats. <laughs> Eight more years. I'll see you before then, though. I don't know how, but I will. Maybe I'll climb up in the tree out trees outside of Pinson and wave at you sometime. We could talk through the fence at night. I'll call you on a telephone and, and let you know. Kid held out his hand. I grabbed it. We shook on the deal like I saw some boys do at Pinson. I imagine the two of us, <laughs> 18 years old, living out in a trailer, just like... We had been there a week already. I felt all right when I walked out of that room. But as soon as I faced down the hall and saw the nurse's station with all the nurses staring at me, I felt sick again. I wanted to curl up on the floor until the pain and loneliness went away. I started to go back into Kit's room, but I only turned and looked at the door. I knew it wouldn't do any good. Suddenly, eight years seemed like an impossible time to wait in that forest alone. Once again, I thought of Hal telling me he was going to Helenweiler eventually and that we weren't safe at his daddy's place for long. My future and the hall in front of me were a long, dark tunnel. I couldn't imagine things could even get any worse. I walked down the hall and up the, to the nurse's station. As soon as I turned the corner for the elevator, I felt an arm go around my neck and force me into a headlock. I stared at the black shoes, the black trousers. I didn't know that I'd been picked up... Sanders sent, but the forearm flesh pressed into my nose brought back memories of him squeezing me against his chest on the side of the road. He squeezed tighter and tighter until I drooled on the floor. Ah, oh, you think that hurts? I'm just getting started with you, boy. Sanders shows up at the hospital and just caught Moon. Whew, didn't see that coming. It's time for a coffee break. 
Got to calm my nerves down a little bit after all that. So Moon's got these plans to hang out, hide out, hide away until Kit gets released from Pinson. Should only be about eight years, but that's a really long time. Like for you guys, eight years, we're talking like you graduated high school. Think about what your whole life's going to be like from now until you get out of high school and go on to college. Uh, that's quite a long time. And, and Moon's stuck because he feels like he wants to stay with Hal, but Hal's going to end up having to go to Helen Weiler eventually. Um, he can't go out in the force because he doesn't want to be alone. He can't be with Kit because Kit's in the hospital. Moon really feels like he's got nowhere left to go. Chapter 38. I guess unless it's the back of Constable Sanders' police car. Oh. Chapter 38. Sanders put handcuffs on my wrists and ankles and hogtied me. He thanked the women at the reception desk for calling him and he picked me up. He carried me down the stairwell like an upside down possum and took each step hard so that my wrists and my ankles jerked painfully. Oh, what's the matter, boy? Looks like you lost the fight you had in you. You can't do anything to me that matters. I don't got anywhere to go anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. I'm not scared of you. Well, there's a lot of things you're about to learn, Ned, and scared's one of them. People were already gathered outside and taking pictures of me when Sanders carried me out of the hospital doors. Before we got to his car, he stopped and answered the reporters while I hung there. Yes, ma'am, this is him. Did he give you any trouble? He's a wild boy, ma'am. As you can see, he said, jostle me around. We got techniques for this kind of trouble. Where will he go now? He'll be in the Livingston jail waiting to see the judge. Sanders opened the back door of his police car and tossed me in. I landed face down and I turned my head so that my cheek pressed against the seat. I could still hear the crowd follow following in, see the flashes of cameras. As we pulled away, Sanders got out of his, got out his Copenhagen and he put a pinch inside his mouth. You know where we're headed, boy? Jail? There too, but we got some business to take care of first. Where's that third boy at? I didn't respond. <laughs> That's all right. We'll get to him later. Right now, you're gonna show me where my pistol is. You lied about me shooting at you. You said I ate your dogs. I wouldn't eat anybody's dogs. I'm not showing you anything. Sanders spit into his cup. You ain't, you ain't showing me anything, he said calmly. That's right. Well, we'll just have to see about that. I felt myself getting car sick, so I t took a deep breath. I let it out slowly. You can't do anything to me that I care about. <laughs> Maybe not, but I've been thinking. That sickly little kid of yours, that sickly little friend of yours, probably tell me what I need to know if I spent more time with him. I felt my face growing hot. You better not touch him. You know, you know he'll be getting out of that hospital for too long. He'll need a police escort back to Pinson. Seeing how he's been in so much trouble, it'd be a shame if I had to give him that ride myself and maybe work some answers out of him. He don't look to me like he could hold out too long. You lied about us, I yelled at him. Sanders chuckled and <laughs> spit in the cup again. Boy, you think you get around me? You think I'm just gonna go away? I don't care what you do to me, just leave Kid alone. Well, then let's start again. Where's that pistol? Breathing deeply through my nose seemed to help the car sickness. As I lay back on the back seat, I took a deep breaths and thought about my situation. I realized that I'd have to get Sanders out into the forest and get him lost and trap him. Then I'd have to go break Kit out of the hospital and take him somewhere safe, maybe to Hal's, where we could all be together again. My mind raced with ideas of where I would tell Sanders the pistol was. I'd have to know the place to pull off my plan. I finally reasoned that there was nowhere I was more familiar with than the forest that I was raised in. It's in my old shelter, I lied. Sanders went silent for a moment. Now, how did it get all the way back there? I got a ride with somebody. When was the last time you were there? Well, I know someone tore it up, if that's what you want to find out. Yeah, I got those surveyors to take me out there to your little rabbit hole. I didn't see no pistol either. Just a bunch of junk. I had the pistol with me, and then I left it there. For that sickly kid's sake, boy, you better hope you ain't lying. Stop there for today.